but that's what we do almost every weekend, almost every weekend. Uh, that's that's a different kind of mission yeah, it's, trip. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of like the Acts chapter 8 thing, uh, you know, where they went in. But, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, because it involves research, but it involves evangelism. It involves exposure. It involves prayer. And um, uh, we've been doing these for 20 – we've been doing these kind of little – you know, launching out into areas and we're going to be going out tomorrow night because ritual night's coming up and, and a big ritual night's coming up for so all SRAs. And now when this is going to be aired or like if you're in October, you got rituals all during the month and the, then you have seven days prior to All Hallows Eve. Then you have one of the biggest human sacrificial ritual nights for undergrounders. The rest of the Wiccans and pagans and others they just see it as uh, they all know that the energies, the powers are are more available, um, because the dark side are, are you know again very real. They know how to congregate. They know how to plot. You know, uh, and and uh, they they they're the ones that design the rituals behind Wiccan rituals, behind pagan rituals, behind underground Satanist rituals. The spirits are the ones that have given the information about how to open the doors, how to access the powers, how to let them in. Wow, we just jumped into Halloween. I I keep getting like a ton of questions to ask. Um, well, okay, first let me say this: if if you and your team are ever like traveling through the state of New York, um, let us know. Um, in case you're going by, you know we can put you up for an evening or, or, or something or work it out where you could stop. We'd love for you to stop. Well, we are, we have a planned trip to Lilydale, uh, New York. And if, uh, and the weird, the neat thing was that when we were doing a conference in, in Newark, we met a young pastor that's just on the other side. He's in New York, but they were going to start going into, you know, do you know about Lilydale? No, okay. no, we don't. Um, I would say this, you know, this is going to be kind of interesting because if you're playing this later, we may have already done this by the time it's aired and you might be able to talk about it. But uh, we're going to be into New York coming up here in the next couple of weeks. We already have a plot. Uh, two vehicles are taking 10 people. We're going to meet this other younger pastor. Some of his people are going to meet with us. Uh, if you guys want to come down and meet, it'd be great because Lilydale in New York is the oldest spiritualist camp in the nation. It, um, in order to live in Lilydale, you have to prove to the board of mediums that you can conjure and engage the dead. Um, Lilydale has a backdrop to victims of satanic ritual abuse. You'll see a statue of Pan that looks like Satan. In a, uh, you do a little study on Lilydale. Take a little look at it. If you're interested in going and meeting up with us, I can. Uh, we'll do this off air. Uh, we'll tell you when and where to meet and this other younger pastor and a few of his folks. Here's what he told me two months ago when we were in Newark. He said, Russ, um, we've been praying about going, you know, praying about the place. We're going to go into the place, try to evangelize, go through and pray. But God told him to step down and wait because God was going to send him a team to work with. And so I looked at him. I said, well, you know, we just we were just in Leedale prior to this meeting in Newark with our team and it kind of assessing it, kind of spying it out a little bit. And uh, so I told him, I said, well, we're coming, and I'll call you. And if you guys want to go, I'll call you guys ahead of time. And it's probably, probably, you know, I don't know where exactly you are in New York, but it might be an hour, couple-hour drive. For us, it's a two-hour drive. But we're going to have a massive, uh, uh, you know, we're going to be praying ahead of time, and then we're going to have some strategy. We're going to go in there. And it's it, it, part of it's going to be looking around. Part of it is uh, going to be just unleashing massive intercession and prayer. And we, we will most likely engage. Now, the other side of this is we had a, under, a victim of satanic ritual abuse. It's really highly tied into the coven up north that uh, when we were driving towards Lilydale and drove into Lilydale, they have a SRA chosen one that is one of the psychic practitioners there. So some of the mediums, some of the psychics that are public, people see them only as a psychic or medium. What they really are are high-powered chosen ones. They may be a psychic or medium to make money, but underground-wise, they are highly trained to do much more. In Lilydale, we have numerous stories, satanic ritual abuse, satanic rituals, human sacrifice, and the rest because 
it's not just psyche because it's not just wiccans up there it's the the deeper underground is also in lilydale wow um you know i th- i think we'll uh we'll think about the, your invitation there russ um i i hope i don't sound like a coward um I want to make sure that I uh, to go into that kind of situation prepared. You sure. Know what I mean, well, I just I mean, if it, I mean, because what we're going to do, I don't even know how many this other pastor guy is going to show up with. We might meet on uh, early Saturday, close to the area, talk, pray over things, and and generally during the daytime, we're just going to go in there and see what happens. We've done this in Salem. We've done this in, you know, in in Yale. Uh, and went up to the uh, Skull and Bones. You know, I tried to push one of our guys in, into the door when they opened the door. I was I'm like, go over by that door. Let me show you in there. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we never really got any major activity up there. We got to witness on the, more, more than anything else. If we don't engage something really underground, we get to witness to people on the streets. We get to pray with people on the streets. We have a good time. We pray with each other. Uh, the trips are always just they. Everybody that does go loves it, uh, and and seldom is there any kind of real. Um, and we're, and, you know, we we even have active uh, officers that go with us that are strong Christians. So if something was to occur, they're with us. Can I just real quickly? Can I, or do you want to talk about anything real um, quick, Dan? I would. There are some experiences I've had um, that I would like your take on, um, and I think they would fall into the attack category. Um, and an experience that a friend of mine has had that I'd like to ask your opinion on because I'm not. He's kind of a high tail teller, and I'm not sure if it's real or not. Um, but let let's let's say I'm asked this question. So, the, well, yeah. No, I mean you can go ahead. I mean, if you if you want, I was just going to ask. I had some questions from Leonard Ulrich, actually. Um, have you ever heard of Leonard Ulrich at all? I don't us? think I have. I don't. I don't know. I I'll, well, just mentioning the name alone, I don't think so. Okay. Well, he's a he's a Canadian filmmaker. Uh, he made this film called uh, New World Order, Secret Societies, Biblical Prophecy, Volume 1, Wars and Rumors of Wars. Um, really awesome film. I sh- I'll send you a link to it uh, if, if you just want to watch it. I mean, I'm sure it's mostly stuff that you already know, but really well put together and kind of in the same fashion that Gans, you know, gives the gospel at the end of Age of Deceit type of deal. Um Anyway, he's he's somebody that, that uh, kind of helped us get started with this podcast, and that we we respect a lot. But um, he he did have some questions for you. Um, he he was asking, um, do you believe that the imminent collapse of America and the West and the Black Awakening are separate events, or are they linked? linked. Um, even if there is a, I mean, I think there's still going to be a dumbing down in the sense that you'll see more program shooters, program bombers, you know, the entire infrastructure weakened, uh, you know, there's a, there's a multi, you know, the, the dark side multitasks in their whole agenda, but they, here's what we need to know from biblically. They understand their agenda. They know their agenda. They know what they're after. Uh, so, uh, for the sake of a new order, America must come down. Europe must come down. There can be no new order um, without the other, you know, all the rest of what's here, the old order, as they look at it, uh, uh, it has to collapse. So just as much as they as they have designed a new order to come, it's mentioned in Daniel, it's mentioned in Revelation 13, the imminent collapse and and then also just America's demise, those kind of things you're asking, is it does it all does it all connect? And my answer would be yes. Uh, there is a progressive, um, in, you think in terms of a, a progressive weakening and taking down, you know, spiritually, uh, the dark side must cloud America and cloud the church and weaken the church and, and continue to develop. Uh, politically, but, but the targets, you know, in a biblical picture uh, is political and military. Uh, that has to be highly infected. Uh, when you see U.S. political ideology become globalist. And I don't believe Obama's a socialist. I believe he's a globalist. He um, He's already sucked in. And I'm just saying from my observation, it has nothing to do with Republican or Democrat. It has everything to do with what's going really going on. Uh, extreme weakening of America. Um, in a real sense, the White House spitting in the face of God as never before. 
so that um, this this opens the door. So I I believe that even though most Americans are worried about America, see the possibility of collapse or even anarchy or civil, you know, something really occurring here, um, that's in the observable political societal trends per se. Underneath that layer is what's rumbling, what's causing it, and what's beneath what's beneath is the bigger problem. If I'm correct. It doesn't mean that I want to be. If I'm correct in this sense that there are highly trained, chosen ones, programmed assassin, shooter, killer, bombers, um, by the tens of thousands in America that are that are intact. If uh, they truly are in every city and every location, what would happen if a, a if a national triggering occurred to where uh, like Holmes or Jared and the VTEC shooter or the Boston bombers, what if 10,000 of them were released in one week? That's their concept. I don't believe that we're going to, I don't believe America's going to collapse just out of a, a old time political collapse. I don't believe Europe will. I believe that there will be a triggering when. You don't believe that it's going to be some massive war that comes here and defeats us. It's going to be an. Um, I, I believe that, that that like if you read the beginning of the book, you know, you know that little fictional story I show you in the beginning. It's how I see it happening. Yeah, wow. Um, I do believe it does involve missiles fired, planes in the air, some some of that. Uh, but but some of the war will happen more in the middle of the trip. But there's no wars, biblically speaking, that's going to destroy all of everything. Uh, the world's not going to come down because of a nuclear war. That's not, you know, the, the biblical picture is Armageddon, not until Armageddon comes about in the very end of the trip. Uh, and that's all about them raising their weapons to try to stop Christ in his descent. Uh, so what we do see in the prophecy of the white, red, black, and pale horse in Revelation 6 is huge. This is massive global tsunamis. Uh, this prophecy about the moment there is the movement or the unleashing of the Antichrist uh, that's all bent on conquest, then something happens immediately. And so the Spirit of God says, come and see, a red horse. Now, I will say after 40 years and being in churches and whatever, I've never heard a sermon on the red horse, never read a, a major commentary or book on the red horse, but it's huge. Look what happens. The red horse, the pirate's horse is released. This, and it's, it's what it is, is prophecy in pictorial form. So this massive uh, prophetic drama that's communicating an event, a global event, because look at, look at the red horse. All of a sudden, a rain, a peace, is taken from the whole earth. That's why it's global. There's going to be a moment in time when instantly a rain, a uh, peace, uh, that holds the world pretty much, you know, is holding the world. It's, it's literally taken out of the whole earth. And then look what, what it says. All of a sudden, something causes people to begin to slay one another. Now, the Greek word isn't for war. That's used in the pale horse. The Greek word here is svadzo, meaning, and you can look this up anywhere, too. The Greek word svadzo is a word that is in reference to animal butchery and animal sacrifice. So all of a sudden, an event that is multi-continental, multinational, where unleashing of, what, hundreds of thousands of people are going to be svadzo, beginning to butcher and slay and slaughter millions of others. What is that? 